All right, hello, and welcome to a video that's hopefully more useful than my other ones have been so far. Um, if you're one of the, like, three people in the world who've watched my videos about Fortnite and shit, this may seem a bit weird. Well, the thing is, I moved from Turbo Virgin Fortnite player to Turbo Virgin Gym Goer um, in the past year, and so I thought I'd share some of what I've learned with you all and address a common issue, that is how not to kill yourself during your leg days. So, enjoy. Here's a quick little preface for anyone who's just fucking new here, right? Here we have a picture of what I imagine the viewer's problem is. It's when the fitness YouTuber give you a mealy leg day. And then he's crying, because he's very sad. Most of the, what's it called, mainstream leg advice is actually becoming pretty good now. But it's at the point where some people are following the what's it called some people are following the amazing top-notch advice of breathe out before your 10 by 10 squats and do 14 sets of pre-exhaustion before every workout and like whatever so hopefully if you stumbled across this channel i'll save you a lot of uh, trial and error First, I want to start off by saying that you don't have to do anything that you don't want the results of. So if you really, really don't care about legs, like if you just could not be asked, right? You don't have to train them. But don't be surprised if you get some of the negatives that come along with that, right? So don't expect to get fucking tree trunk legs if you're not going to put in the work to get them. And if you just care about aesthetics, like, I don't know, hard style. What's that? What's that fucking music they call? Like, Ziz, Hardstyle, whatever the fuck, right? If you're one of those people who just, like, train chest and arms every session. Holy shit. I don't know if you can hear that. There's a bit of a police chase going on. We'll wait for that to pass. Any second now. Okay. This is all in one take because I think it would be funnier to post that way. If you're one of those people who just only trains chest and arms and only cares about fucking looking nice, right? Which I am one of those people, but I also care about the numbers on the bar. At least try and get them proportionally strong, because you don't want to have a complete, like, godlike V-taper and then just have absolute sticks to stand on for legs, right? You don't want to, like, go to the gym with your friends one day who've never been with you and you, like, get, like, one plate loaded on the bar, you step out of the rack with the, I don't know, with the intention of mogging everyone, and then it just, like, staples you to the floor because you've never squatted in your life, right? Also, another thing, I cannot teach you how to get the most massive legs yet because I go to the House of Iron, right? I go to the best gym ever, <laughs> Planet Fitness, right? But I still know what gets me in there, and what gets me to do the work that I can do in, with the limited equipment that they have there. So hopefully you can take away something from this video that resonates. And yeah, let's, let's get started, bro. This is going to be a three-step process. The first step we're going to be talking about is the difference between a leg day and a lower body day. I'll give you a spoiler. Leg days suck ass and lower body days are cool. Step two is going to be... Please get hyped. And we have the... We have the long-nosed dog asking you to get hyped, right? And that's all the mindset. And if you know anything about mindset, you probably know what's going to be covered in that section right there. And number three is just extra tidbits to finish you off. You can see here is Eric Bugenhagen, um having a pose off with a peacock. I'll let you decide who's winning. The first point that this video was pretty much based off of... <laughs> based... And one of the most important points here is that leg days can go fuck themselves. As you can see on the left is an image of a leg day, which isn't very nice. It has a bunch of pre-exhaustion, right? And then, which isn't bad, right? If you know how to use it. But if you look at what comes after, it's awful. You have five sets of a barbell squat. I don't know why it says up to 500 pounds there. I guess if you can lift more than 500 pounds, you just can't do this routine. And then you have a hack squat, then a leg press. Then you have a leg curl before a stiff leg deadlift, so an isolation before a compound. Amazing. 
And then you have seated calv rays, spelled <laughs> spelled calv instead of calf. And then you have a tibia rays, which I'm scared to look up what a tibia is. But as you can see here, there's way too much volume. Whatever, way too many exercises for one day. These are the types of workouts that make people fucking hate legs. Because they just do it once, and they can't walk for a week, and then they're like, I'm not gonna train, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna train fast, I'm not gonna bench press, right? No. On the right side here, we have... Okay, holy shit. Okay, you probably can't hear that, there's a bit of beeping still. The police chase is still going on. But basically... On the right side here, we have a lower body day from one of Baldani Man's programs that he actually deleted. And so I had to go back into like the Google sheet and like kind of view a previous version of it, which is why it's kind of blue. Then we have a picture of him that says deletes perfectly good program for no reason. So if we look at this versus that, right? He has that squad variation with some back downs and a top set, which is, it's, it's not really that advanced. The main point is that the, your first set is really heavy or at least really heavy compared to the last two sets that you do and those other two sets are gonna be like basically five to ten percent lighter whatever just so you can get the same amount of reps so you can get quality work in but that's besides the point so this one notice how this one has quads hamstrings and calve and uh, a tibia, whatever the fuck a tibia is. This has squat variation, which is gonna be mainly quads, right? Some upper back movement, some more quads, some more hamstrings, and it has calves, abs, and uh, I think rear delts is what the power raise works. So, you got a lot more work done, right? Because here, it may seem like there's more exercises, but in reality, the last, like, bro, anything other than the first like fucking three movements you're gonna be absolutely sandbagging and you're gonna get nothing out of so here we have actually intelligent like rep ranges whatever four by 15 of what was that no please okay here we have four by 15 of leg extensions before five sets of squats very smart and then everything else is four sets because you know it, it just is how it is so let's go over had to get a similar result to this and a less similar result to this because we do not want this let's go the first suggestion of a good lower body day is to not squat and deadlift heavy in the same session unless you're actually just using the empty bar right because if you're like any further along than just your first few sessions you're gonna find that it's very hard to put the same amount of effort into both your squats and your deadlifts and so it would be better for you to split them apart and Put them out spread them out onto separate days right okay point number two is to train your upper back and or your posterior chain every time you train legs there's no reason why you couldn't include like a hyper extension or a hip thrust or whatever for your posterior chain or a deadlift variation like a dumbbell romanian deadlift or a regular romanian deadlift whatever but not you don't have to do conventional unless you're not squatting that day and additionally, you can train something with your upper back, right? That could be, you can put a shrug on there, you can put like a rear delt fly, you can put, you can do pull-ups, right? Because especially if you're like squatting heavy, doing some pull-ups after, make sure that you don't get like 17 inches shorter because the bar is pressing down on your spine. That's not an actual thing that happens. It's just, it just feels nice to do pull-ups after squats. The final suggestion for a good lower body day is to include a smaller isolation for whatever muscle you care the most about. That could be an ab isolation, neck isolation, forearms I wouldn't really recommend, but you can do it if you really want to. I would put those on the days when I'm benching or like, I don't know, doing some other curl variation as well. You can do a trap isolation, so you can do a, like a <laughs> rack pull above the knee. <laughs> you can do some shrugs, whatever you want. And then you can also do a rear delt movement, like a reverse pec deck. You can do a power raise, as you saw in the other example. Just whatever you want. Just include an extra little isolation so you don't only train your quads and hamstrings, right? And then, of course, add in that posterior chain work and something for your back and you'll be golden. 
Now, if you don't want to do a lower body day, you can also do a full body day, which are also amazing. You don't have to train every single muscle group on a full body day, right? You can just train an upper body movement and a lower body movement in the same day. So like, you can do like a barbell bench followed by a leg press or an RDL. Notice how those are not the main variations. So you wouldn't do like a barbell bench followed by a conventional deadlift or a barbell bench followed by a squat. You follow them by some less fatiguing variations. And that way you're training both your upper and lower body in the same day. And so it's a full body day, even though you don't have to go through like every single fucking fiber in your body, right? Wait, what? What did I write there? That's such a shit point, what? Okay, so I'm sorry for the interruption. It appears like, <laughs> like some sort of goblin just wrote in a stupid point. So we're, I just deleted that and then we're ready to move on to our next point. Wonderful, leg days can go fuck themselves. Do either a lower body day in which you trained your posterior chain, your upper back, and some other mu little muscle group that you care about, or just train like a press and a secondary variation of a leg movement on the same day for a full body day. And then you can do whatever you want on that day pretty much. Okay, next point. So the image on the left here is an accurate description of why most people don't want to actually go in and do legs because it's very difficult. Uh, Eric Bugenhagen is here with one rep of a split squat about to fucking smash this folk Bulgarian split squats are very difficult. Okay, that's the point. And most people don't want to do them, including me. Tips to combat BSSS, which is Bulgarian split squats. Holy shit, I can't speak English. Tips to combat Bulgarian split squat syndrome. It's number one, music. I'm sure you didn't need me to tell you to use music in your training. That being said, you do need me to tell you not to- I actually can't speak my language, nice. Now I'm sure you didn't need me to tell you that music can help in getting you hyped, that's the main factor. But you do need me to tell you if you have a playlist that really gets you hyped, whatever. Don't keep it on for the whole session, bro. Don't keep the same, like, level of intensity in your songs on for the entire session. Just your hardest sets. Because it's gonna kind of water it down. It's gonna dilute the effect if you keep it on for the entire session. And you're not gonna be able to repeat that. And if you can't be consistent, then you're gonna go nowhere. So, for times when you're not doing your top set of something. Like, for example, you're doing a rear delt fly or something. You don't need, like... <laughs> you don't need the most hype shit ever to do that, right? Basically, use either nothing or something more calming for the rest of your sessions that aren't like your top very very heavy sets of your big movements. In terms of what music you should use for those very very heavy sets, I wouldn't really recommend what's a famous YouTuber. Trend Twins. Like if you look at the Trend Twins training, they have these like hard style whatever playlist that for me at least just don't seem to fucking do anything it's just a bunch of really loud noises and nothing so what works for me it's songs like for example sabaton songs that talk about like okay i like fucking spurg out for a bit i'm adding this like post editing but basically the main point is the songs you want to choose you want to make sure that they have some sort of meaning for example, in the album Berserker. Or as I very funnily changed the title, Autism by Beast in Black. All the songs there are about Berserk, which is a very cool manga. Sabaton songs are all usually about some war or some heroes or whatever. And that's very cool. And you want to make sure you're mindful of the fact that you're not actually these people. You're not literally guts because you're fucking deadlifting one and a half plates off the floor at an LA Fitness. But in that moment, it really does get you going and get you hyped. And like no one else is listening to it. You don't have to show or tell anyone. So and if it improves your performance, why not use it, bro? And also it's just fun. Yeah, peace. Now, I wouldn't just openly fucking blast these songs on a speaker and be put in a Planet Fitness epic fail compilation, right? But it's really cool. It's just, Look at this guy. He has a 
What do you, what do you mean is that? He has like an axe and there's like a castle in the background and there's some fucking gremlin Bosnian there, right? And there are skulls everywhere, it's so cool. Alright, next up is to never forget why you started. You can't always be motivated for someone else's goals. What this means is that, for example, if you got groomed into being a powerlifter and you're now doing squats 3 by 5 every day for the rest of your life, you're probably not going to be very... If that isn't like your original intention for training, you're not going to be very motivated to do that, right? Because that isn't what you wanted. That is what the bloat lord himself... Mar Marcus Aurelius <laughs> Ripito. That's what he wanted, bro. That wasn't your original intention. You didn't want to get a four-plate squat. You just wanted some nice legs, bro. On the other hand, if you did start to get that four-plate squat, you're probably not going to be very motivated to do some fucking bro split where you do 17 sets of an isolation once a week, right? Because that isn't what you wanted. You wanted to lift some heavy weight, right? You didn't want to do fucking leg extensions until you, like, I don't know. So... Just never lose sight of why you started. And make sure that whatever you're doing in the gym, it's because you want to do it and not because someone else made you think that it's the right thing to do. Last bit for this section may seem like a meme, but this this nice man, this nice horse-necked man up here is Eric Bugenhagen. He probably, like, curls your total. I don't know. And his videos, three of his videos in particular, are kind of a cheat code. The three videos that I'm talking about, I didn't just add the exclamation marks just for the fun of it. These are the actual titles of the videos, so it's pep talk exclamation mark. I need a hero, and followed by three exclamation marks. You've probably seen that. That's his most famous video. That one's just a montage. That one doesn't have many learning lessons. But if you look at how he trains, you can try and um, not exactly replicate that because he he does like he does some very odd lifts in that video. He does like behind the dick deadlifts, zercher, <laughs> zercher bench press, whatever. But if you can copy the intensity with which he trains, I think you'll get some very good results. And the other one is no talking, no smiling, which is a actual just a mindset guide for his mindset. So if you watch those three videos, in the moment you're going to be very actually motivated to go and train legs. But in the long term, if you apply the principles, they're going to benefit you even more than just that initial, yeah, let's go. Now the counter argument for this would be from the, I think it's Jimmy Bookworm, what Bald Omni Man calls them. I mean, the fucking the nerdy emoji people who are like, well, actually, you shouldn't need motivation. Discipline is all you should need. Bro, if you could be motivated to train legs, why would you just choose not to do that and be like, ah, I'm so fucking cool, look at me, I'm using discipline. Yes, okay, do. But for those times when you don't need to use discipline, it's nice, right? And these videos kind of <laughs> guarantee that at least for one time per video. And for many more times if you listen to what he says and use it in your training. Last up, we have some golden tidbits here. We have... Uh, Mark Ripito himself overseeing a pretty nice squat over here. You have a person snorting caffeine um, No, it's just a person snorting and then a picture of caffeine you get the implication and over here You have famous bodybuilders Edward Hallway and Ryan Shaw What the fuck? Why is there a bat chest emote here the first extra tidbit is to standardize your ROM your range of motion what this means in simple terms is to go the same depth in your squats every time, bro. Please. Squats are going to be a big part of your lower body training and a big anxiety that many people can develop. You start to question whether you actually progressed in strength or you just fucking cheated more. So to avoid that, record yourself, right? You don't have to record every single set, but like a set every two weeks, whatever. Just consistently to make sure that you're going the same depth and just be honest with yourself, don't don't bullshit yourself out of gains just because you want to put that 5 pounds on the bar even though you know you can't go low enough with it. This means that unless you're competing in like 2-ply equipped powerlifting where they move fucking 2 inches, just please go below parallel. Please don't aim for a parallel because then some reps you're gonna get above, some reps you're gonna get below, and then some reps you're gonna get at parallel. If you aim to go below parallel, right, at most, you will hit that 90 degree angle, right? And that'll be you 
fucking shorting the range of motion by a few inches. The standard is you're gonna go below, so you know that the lift counts. And then a few times you may go like ATG and that's really cool. You don't have to go ATG, as the grass. Every time you squat, just because it's not necessary, and some people actually can't with their mobility. And it's also not optimal if you want to use <laughs> the most amount of weight. But just go slightly below parallel. Trust me, it'll save you a lot of worry and frustration. Why does it say, if you go to a planet meme like me, beware? What's the joke there? <laughs> okay, so now that dumbass line is gone and so is the bash chest emote. The next point is sometimes take stimulants. If you're really, really feeling down, especially, it says especially if you're a minor, um, for a very funny joke, because most of the other people who I go to the gym with fucking blast free workout, dry scoop that shit for like, I don't know, they mix like, they mix an ounce of water into the entire tub, and then make like a dough out of it, and then bake the dough, and then, and then it becomes pre-workout bread. And so they have a lot of caffeine per day. I have none on a daily basis, except if it's like I have one green tea, just because it tastes nice. The majority of the time you should not be taking caffeine, because then that becomes your new baseline, and then when you're not taking it, you're gonna perform worse than you would usually. But if the moment arises when you're just completely dead from whatever, go ahead. Like, take a scoop, just like, have some either pre-workout on hand, or just some caffeinated drink, whatever, to be used once in a while, and then you're gonna be fine, you're not gonna get dependent on it, you're gonna keep your performance up, you're gonna be fucking golden. And also, I'm just gonna be honest, if you do use it sparingly, the times when you do take caffeine are gonna be some of the most fun, like, training sessions and the most productive that you have. Final point of this video is not to try and convince you into becoming a powerlifter, whatever. But if you are one of those people who just like spams isolations, only cares about aesthetics, whatever, I would suggest learning more about like strength training and especially like the memes that goes with it because the memes of powerlifting are very funny. And then you can, <laughs> and then you can get like these famous bodybuilders up here, Ryan Shaw and Eddie Hall in the picture. That's what I ch- Who the fuck? Why is this guy- Why does this guy look like that? This guy looks like an actual, like, ghost. <laughs> so anyways, if you're just going to the gym, fucking curling away, don't know much, and then suddenly you're like, hey, it might be a good idea to train legs, but you can't really see the point. I would learn at least- at least the inside jokes of powerlifting, and then you'll think it's funny, and if you think it's funny, you're a lot more likely to go and actually do it, right? And then learning about the lore and just how cool some of the people in that space are, you learn to not think of your leg days as like an unnecessary byproduct or like a bridge you must cross to be able to train chest and arms again. And you'll be actually having fun. You'll be enjoying putting up some heavy weights, whatever. Cool. You don't have to become a powerlifter though. All right, that was the video. We got through that. That was fucking rough through some parts, but it's fine. I'm sure in the editing, I'm sure the editing will make it look and sound nicer. That took fucking four hours to edit, holy shit. Thank you very much for watching. Expect more actually helpful videos in the near future. And yeah, this is a, this is a very nice cat. Okay, goodbye.